Hey, I'm Kate, and in this episode, we are finishing up the parlor in our 1909 American Foursquare. I guess the dining room is canceled. In the last episode, we painted these two rooms, two colors from Benjamin Moore's Color Trends color palette of 2022, and eventually, after painting that, moving the dining room table out of the center of the room and creating a sitting and entertaining room for our guests and for ourselves, which better matched our lifestyle. Old. We're headed to the thrift store to get a couple things that I hid, maybe, are still there, maybe, maybe, maybe. It the reason why I abandoned these little guys is because there was a really long line that day and I didn't want to wait in line and they're the only thing I wanted, but then I was like, I have to go back and see. I have to go back. They're so cute, look at the little zebras. I got my zebras, got a coffee table. This is so funny. It's zebra day. It's Zebes. Say hey, Zebes. Okay, I'm at this like bulk sales outlet where you buy everything by the weight. This was five dollars. It's made of paint. It's it's something. So there you go. We got Zebes. I'm sure, Zebes is in there. I picked up this paint. This Krylon high heat protects finishes up to a thousand degrees, and I am going to paint that on the inside. This is a historical gas fireplace that actually works. And though I don't perceive we'll be using it very often, this little finishing touch makes all the difference in my perception of how the space is completed. Now we're gonna turn these two pieces of wood into this hexagonal Moroccan inspired table. First, I took the eight inch by six foot pieces of wood and divided them up into three parts and then sawed them apart and then adjusted my saw to about 30 degrees. In order to demonstrate to myself that I could make this table, I made this. It's not perfect because I wasn't using, I, I wasn't being exact, but I just wanted to see if the angle, that miter, was gonna work. And it seems as though, mostly it did, so. I then cut each board both sides at a 30 degree miter. So those 30 degrees will add to 60 degrees, which will add to 180 degrees 180 degrees times 2 is 360 degrees, which will connect all six parts into a full hexagon. I then lined up my six pieces, drew a grid on there, and then started freestyling the bottom, which would become the base for my Moroccan-inspired table, and refined that with a few different logical tools. I then used the jigsaw to cut out each piece and then sanded the, that piece down and then used that piece as a stencil for my five other pieces. I then cut out the five other pieces and sanded down the five other pieces. And then using these Sharpie oil-based markers, I started using my inspiration images to create designs on cardboard of just parts of designs, which I then cut out with an X-Acto, which I will then use as a stencil for my design on each of the six pieces of my hexagonal table. I actually regret that I painted on the design first because then I had to paint around the design to get the background on and then refine the design on the background. Just seemed a little backwards, but I eventually got it. I then used wood glue and my brad gun to combine the six pieces into a hexagonal shape. Then using a remnant piece of butcher block, I traced and then sawed to create the top. Stained the top with a mahogany red stain, sort of fixed my mistakes, and then set my miter saw to 30 degrees to use to cut a lot of trim, paint it gold, and then apply it and refine all of my different parts of my table. I then polycoated the entire table twice. In retrospect, I would have painted the black background on first and then my design and all of my little refining pieces, but the table turned out all right. So we'll see it in the room. I really love homes that instantly fascinate you and draw you in, and I wanted this space to feel super cozy and the place in our home where anyone can go and relax and retreat or have a sing song and some laughs all together. Our house was built in 1909, so it has many historical features, and that obviously lends itself to a vintage aesthetic, but I always wanna keep it really authentic to us, a little mysterious, 
And of course, a little design humor never hurts. Most everything in this room was thrifted, gifted, or very inexpensively collected. And I think that's one of the things that makes this room feel not a day over 1939. And I mean that it really feels like it was intentionally supposed to be this in between retro and post art deco room. And I suppose that it's fun to create a story behind something that is already there. And then you're just kind of placing things and being inspired and listening to the space as you're creating it. And all of the pieces fell together so amazingly here. And I love this space and it's a little on the edge of what I would usually do. But, and I don't think that doing a vintage aesthetic is good every time, but I really feel like it works here. I mean, for example, I got these paintings for $8 a piece and they're totally lovely. And I found out they're by a local female artist who lived between 1885 and 1955. So that was kind of cool. The architectural bones of this house are already very lovely, so it's not difficult to work with, but it's really nice adapting the house to our style and what we want to create for the time being. And a couple years ago, I would have never thought that my style would be this wildflower color on the walls. It just, I'm totally flipped out by it because it just really makes everything look electric and um, lifts the shadows and just it's just such a great color and I'm so glad that we chose it and I'm so glad it inspired us to turn this room into the parlor and accompanying the sofa with the lovely Bruneau chairs by Mies van der Rohe designed in 1927 to 1930 over across the room and Fargo is the piano area with souvenir pictures from the London World Exhibition of 1851 and some lovely pieces from friends and loved ones and all of the red books. It had never been my instinct to paint an already dark room, the darkest room in our house, a dark color, but painting this room the mysterious color by Benjamin Moore was actually a really brilliant idea and I think it really just cozied this room up and I love to sit in here now and edit videos and spend a little bit of time here having a cup of coffee and you know enjoying the windows and the morning sun coming in and I'm very happy Mike's office isn't in there anymore because I can't imagine being in there all day but it's great for a little bit of use. The same day that the Zebra Zebes came into my life, as did a coffee table, and I ended up not using it for the video shoot for this, but it was the alternative to the chrome table, and it's a round wood table. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like the chrome one or the round wood one? And what do you think of the room? Please let me know. And otherwise, take good care of yourselves. We'll see you very soon on Cade Made. Thank you so much for watching this video.